Yo, yo. Yo. That's dope. I'm just, uh, I'm in space right now, son. <laughs> That's how we do it. What's going on? Chilling, man. How you feeling? Just maintaining, man. You know, trying to see what's up day by day. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. We're going to jump into a history lesson and then work our way up to what you currently have going on. Uh, <laughs> if you can uh, take us back to uh, where Lord Sear was born and raised. Born and raised in Money Making Manhattan, Harlem. Uh, really Upper West Side around the 80s. Moved to Harlem at a very, very young age of five or six or seven. And um, yeah, Manhattan, the home. No doubt. What was life like for Lord Sear as a teenager growing up in Manhattan? Uh, stealing shit, stealing food, <laughs> writing graffiti, uh, just, you know, break dancing, learning music, uh, loving music, jazz, um, going to little jazz spots with my, um, my little aunt in law, my, um, Nancy white lady within the building, team to jazz spots where she would, you know, play at. And right. yeah, um yeah, just a lot of um festivities, chilling, meeting people, hanging out with uh blacks, whites, Chinese, <laughs> Italians, Jewish people, yeah. Multicultures here. No doubt. Uh, can you take us back to some of your earlier music influences before you got into hip hop? Uh, who was it? Um, in hip hop, I looked up to like the Treasures Three. Um, because I'm an old school cat, so you know, born in '73. But the um, Treasures Three, um, Crash Crew, um, Fearless Four. It's my, you know, the 80s shit, you know, from, um, when I first heard Sucker MCs, uh, Run DMC, DJ Louie Louis to cut that up back and forth, 84th Festival on Amsterdam Avenue by the Handball Courts, used to rock that. That was pumping then. Uh, you see, I'm old school, it was pumping. Right. They don't say that no more. Hey, <laughs> man. You had that little Uzi Vert, man, that little nigga pumping. <laughs> they were like, hey, yo. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that was my shit back then. You know, uh, old school, definitely old school R and B, funk, mm -hmm. soul. My influences, yeah. Um, what was the earliest memories of Lord Sears seeing hip hop on the block firsthand? What did you first see uh, visually uh, firsthand uh, coming up? Uh, DJ and both it was um, um. What was that church? Oh man, oh, that killed me, man. Oh man, um, the church on eighty fourth between Riverside Columbus, or was it Riverside Columbus? Yeah. Um, used to go there and see, you know, my um one of my best friends, Greg, used to write, he used to write graffiti, he used to write Source TMC, and um he taught me how to blend. I used to scratch a lot, um. Shout out to Raul, uh, my brother's best friend. Got his record, Wild Style, the soundtrack. And I used to cut it up with a knob. All I knew was a scratch. I didn't know how to do the other shit. I just scratch, get it, get scratch, get scratch. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, man, this thing here. So then, you know, uh, yeah, um, St. Matthew's and St. Timothy's Church. That's right. And they used to see, uh, they had a little um, club, little gathering, little, little um, communion room in there, communion room. And then, you know, you go down the block, and that was, you know, part of that was Louie Lou cutting it up on the uh, ones and twos. I was like, damn, man, that little nigga nice. Had a little afro. But I thought he was black <laughs> all the time. He's Dominican. And this brother right here, killed him. But I grew up with a lot of Dominicans. We would, you know, they used to get married. You call them black, man. I like that shit. <laughs> and they blacker than me, but that was back then, you know. Dominicans are Jerry girls. <laughs> uh. 
would you say in DJing was your first foray into hip hop? You said you break, broke yes. dance earlier. So DJing was how you eventually got into hip hop. Can you take us back to that moment? Um, when, because that was the thing to do. Like, all right, you know, like now with kids with Xbox, because of Xbox, I'm like, okay, a lot of niggas is looking fat like me now through video games. <laughs> my mother, God bless each other. My mom's God bless you, like, get your funky ass outside. <laughs> So you had to go outside. You right. You ball and sports and you break dancing. You playing anything you got to do. Tennis ball on the stoop, but you're outside. Right. It's not like how these dirty niggas be like, yo, we outside with that shit. <laughs> yeah, you are outside. Police want you to be outside and arrest you. Go ahead. Do that dumb shit, you dumb nigga. But <laughs> in my day and times, you know, back then, it's not like how it is now, but it was fun. And if I was to do it again, yes. Just only certain shit. I just wanted right. to fuck that girl in the house at the time. Right? <laughs> and I wanted to do that again. And I couldn't do star. But yeah, that's about it. I mean, I love listening to music, man. Yeah. Not saying I love it, I still do. Yeah. Right. Can you take us back to some of the dues you had to pay earlier on to get your name out there? Uh, I didn't pay no dues. No dude. I just stayed within what I loved. And paying my dues were was you kinda could say with um but it was just learning with Stretch of Bobito. But I got down with Bob to do the radio with him because I was always in the music and he always see me sit there on the app chilling with the radio and he knew I knew my old school and he couldn't believe it. He was like, Wow. I was like, yeah, we, you know, the same people we knew lived and they all in the same building, like Curious, he lived in that same building, God bless my nigga Kane Nett, who passed away years ago, his father um, owns the Kia Records, you know what I mean, Eric B and Rakim, uh, King's son, cut back to DC, so, you know, I went to high school with Kane Nett, and, you know, he introduced me to everybody on the app, chilling. So they wrote graffiti. I wrote graffiti. He wrote graffiti. We used to bomb up. CM crew. Criminal minded. Not constipated monkeys. No, no, no. Uh, long story with that. But it was CM mom, criminal minded, from the classic album, Criminal Minded. You know what I mean? So, right. yeah. Um, it was fun. It was fun, man. I had a, I had a great time. So would you say you uh, first met uh, Bob Beto through your love of DJing? He just uh, uh, knew you knew your music, or did you uh, meet him uh, before that? What it was, it was like, you know, because we all used to hang out at the GOAT, Rock City Park, a.k.a. the GOAT, uh, um, El Man ago. I know you never heard of him, the basketball player. Yes. Who was known for um, Paul's dunking uh, two balls, um, at the same time, wow, that's his house was that way, you know. Um, shout to um, who's that on there? Oh, E Cash, what up, Eddie? Eddie Baez, he wrote K Nitty, yeah, he was rest in peace. See, we knew him and shit, you know. See him, uh, all right, what was up here? Oh, so yeah, so basically, you know, just being on the ad chilling, to tell you the truth, man. That was the spot to go to to get fucked up and get high and get tall, but I bring the you know bring the radio out. We have got to play music, you know. It was the hangout spot. It wasn't like the hey man, they did tour. They started doing tournaments and that after a while, but it kind of did tournaments, but it wasn't. Eh. But niggas niggas ain't want to go on that um block. Niggas get tore up. Right. Police right there, but we still whatever. But you know, yeah. So. Uh, can you take us back to the earlier stages of a, the Stretch and Bob Beto show, which debuted in 1990? Uh, what role did you exactly play, and uh, at what point did you join the show? Uh, I was already there as the hang the fuck out. Because I was like, look, you know, let me um, let me chill. Uh, um, fucking. <laughs> hey, look, look let, me, let me go on the app and, you know, chill out. And Bob was like, come on, man. Why don't you come by and check out? I was like, oh, it's college radio. Let's look at this nerd shit. You know, you think about it at the time. It was just then. You understand what I'm saying? So I didn't think it was going to blow up to be what it is now. Or right. 
So I go to drink my little 40. So you can't drink, you can't bring no 40 in there. Oh, whatever, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, man. Sid, oh, you know, Sid snapped on everybody. Yeah, see, man, e cash knew. I used to snap on everybody, man. I get to talk, <laughs> fuck around. But that was just me having fun, man. We used to call it hood heat. When you're in the hood and you snap it on niggas. So, you know, hood heat. I'm eating on this nigga, man. Fuck this nigga, boss. Right. But, you know. Uh, and after a while, I'm like, yo, this is, oh, shit, this is some Jeff Jam. Oh, this is, wait a minute. Then a year goes by, two years. Then, then I'm a part of the show. Then go on tour with George, DJ with Kerry, shout out to George, shout out to Cotty, and then go do that. And then I'm like, wait a minute, let me take this shit serious because Bob was like, yo, Sid, come on, man. Um, you're going to take this serious or not, man? And I thought about it. I said, what? Wait a minute, I'll be right back. So then I used to hang out and pass the projects. Um, he used to call me Uptown, Uptown building. So I used to hang out in the Bronx. And then you know, um, AG from DITC lived on the other side. And then Percy P knew my peoples and shit. So I said, Percy Rhyme. I said, yo, Percy, hold on, man. Yo, what you doing, nigga? Yo, come to my man show on the radio. Oh, really? What this is? Because it started, you know what I mean? Nobody really, this is like a year, a two, three years going in, two years going in. So when I brought Percy P up, Bob and it was like, oh, they, you know, they was really convinced, like, oh, Sid is knowing, you know, you know, some people up there. All right. Got purse to a little little um single deal with Big Beat Atlantic. You know? People started right. like this shit. Yeah, and then started being more aware and paying attention more to what's going on. Still got my little sauce in there. But, you know, yeah. So, so I put the Rhyme Inspector, Percy P. You mentioned uh, snapping on cats earlier on. Uh, that was my next question. Um, you were known for roasting callers and, and some of the guests. Um, where did that come about? That what came was, about from... What was, uh, what, what was some of your best memories That's also? Uh, I remember one time, man, when I got, when I got really embarrassed. I wore this big-ass coat, right? <laughs> and what happened was that uh, I didn't know that they were all right. The coat was a bear coat, and it was a bear, and it said bear. <laughs> so I wore the boots and all that, you know. And it was like 10, 12 people outside. We all snapped on each other. And then niggas is like, Yo, see, man, yo, you making mad money. I said, What you mean, man? Look at your coat, man. You guys said, Yeah, what you talking about? He said, I didn't know you made your own coat. So what is this bear? <laughs> yeah, it's you, bear, seer, it's you bending down. I was like, dude, the whole block, like, you know, someone's laughing, but everyone ran, like, if they, like, a gunshot, like, niggas ran laughing, and they used to always, and this is on 98th Street, and I lived on 112, so I used to walk home all the time, so I, like, so I walked home, brother, like, tearing, like, oh, man, that ain't right, man. <laughs> I ain't right. Yeah. You were uh, on what I consider a, a hip hop, a, a golden era hip hop a, a dream job. Um, did you know what was going on at the moment or uh, did it take you a while looking back uh, at what such a, a moment, you know, uh, great time it was back then? Um, Like after a while, yeah, man, it was getting cool. It was fun. No more break dancing. I didn't write graffiti as much anymore. But then I noticed, you know what I'm saying? Like, wait a minute. You know, Bob took us to downtown in the clubs. So let me check out the club scene. And, you know, it was weird to me going to the village and, like, but the niggas in the village and, you know, the projects down there was just like us, but they downtown. So then, you know, I was like, all right. Um, then... It was it was just a cool experiment experience. Uh, it got kind of weird to like later on. It was like a more money essence, you know. Motherfuckers right. started balling more mid nineties, right. and everybody's a killer. Everybody had guns now. I'm like, damn man, how they get these guns from? 
You know? A oh, rest in peace to Ricky Powell. Absolutely. You know what I mean? He, he used to get tight with me, man, because I used to snap on him. <laughs> and he's, yeah, he's like, ah, it's here. Oh. <laughs> Hey, yo, Ricky, what's wrong with you, man? Yeah, shout out to Ricky Powell. I just bought his DVD on um, DustyGroove.com. Yeah. That little DVD, you know? Yeah. But that's about it, you know? Dope. 